Uh, Del Martin and Phyllis Lyon are prominent towering figures of LGBTQ history. So I, I think one of the most significant things about Del and Phil's career is that they were really in that first generation of gay and lesbian people to become public on purpose. I think their work literally saved lives. We can take so much inspiration from what Del and Phyllis did in this house. They changed the world. So the 1950s were uh, in some ways the apex of heteronormativity in the United States and the time when there was the most concerted and organized oppression of LGBTQ people. So Dell and Phyllis really came into their activism during that really dark time for LGBTQ Americans. They were among the founders of the first lesbian political organization in the United States, the Daughters of Belitis. And they both went on to amazing careers in political organizing and advocacy. And then they were the first same-sex couple uh, to get married in California when it became legal. I think one of the most significant things about Dell and Phil living in this home and doing political organizing and community building out of their home is just to recognize how few opportunities there were to be publicly gay or lesbian really no division between the personal and the public. It's like they were living their truth 24-7, 365. The house, I always saw it as an incubator. So it was their home, it was their haven, um, it was also their social space. And, you know, entering the house was like entering not just the past, but the present because they were always very involved in whatever was going on in San Francisco. I like to say that they put the social in social action because they really understood that by providing a, a place where people could just relax and be was you know, key to the work that would then happen. But again, we were never going to be anything other than citizen as well as a woman and a lesbian and so on. And, and as a citizen, I felt I had to have the same rights as everybody else, and I was working for that. So maybe we weren't revolutionary, yeah. but we were evolutionary. Which I think at some point, I think it's pretty revolutionary. I think it's t important to preserve this place to allow the work that was happening here from 1955 to 2020 to continue happening. It, as a historic preservationist, I really do feel like it is the physical spaces that link us to history. It is the physical spaces that can take an oral history interview and, and make a space come alive through the multimedia experience that CyArk is creating. Queer spaces have historically not been preserved. And there's a whole lot of reasons for that. Of course, there's institutional homophobia and transphobia. Uh, also because for a long time, we didn't necessarily think of us, ourselves as a community whose history was worth preserving. And so it's really only been fairly recently that there's been a recognition that places like this matter because if we don't preserve them, a key part of that history is lost. You know, for me as a historian, it, it just feels very important to document, to preserve, to interpret, because like that's the direction that hope lies. And that just as the present is different from the past because of actions that people have taken, so too can the future be different from today through what we do now.